Welcome back to Inside Ambition. I'm Alexandra George, and today on the show, I'm talking to Jane Jeanette Ansa. She is the current host and producer of Good Morning Neighbors on WKDU. Hi, Jane. How are you? Hi, Alex. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much. You are our first reoccurring guest on our show, which is very exciting. Yay! I love this show, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming back. We love to have you. Um, for viewers who don't know, Jane was on our show a couple of weeks back um, for our conversation about race, and she's back again because she's continued to have these conversations about race on Drexel's campus um, on her podcast for WKDU, and you got some pretty awesome recognition from the university. I'm sure a lot of our viewers saw the email President Fry sent out, and your name was put on blast, your show was put on blast. So how did that feel when you saw that recognition and that acknowledgement from the university? Um, well, that was a really interesting thing that happened. And also, just everyone knows, Alex was the first person to let me know that I was in the email. I was up <laughs> the phone, I see the text message, and I was like, oh my gosh. So, um, but it was a really, it was a really good feeling. I was like really impressed that, you know, it had made it that far. But I think that the conversation that I did have with Kim and Tiana in that episode was really important. And I appreciated that the university was able to recognize that, um, and support that and I just my hope was that as much as you know they're promoting the show and shouting it out that they are listening mm -hmm. to what the show is actually about and what was said and taking those things into consideration because I know there's still a long way to go so um, it was I think it was really impactful beneficial to the show a lot of um, other parts of the university reached out to the show as well for other stuff. So it was pretty awesome, especially for it to be the first episode and for that to happen, it was like a blessing. So, so I know that you've produced several episodes at this point, but um, in reference to the very first episode with Ch Chief Diversity Officer Kim Golston, who is heading up the Anti-Racism Task Force, and I believe it was Tiana Williams from DBAC, who yep. is obviously a student, um, how did you feel that conversation went? I know that there is a lot of push from the student body, especially when it comes to this anti-racism task force. How did you feel the conversation went? Did you feel like it was productive? Um, I felt really good about the conversation. I had never met Kim before. I know Tiana from working with her, you know, in school and stuff, but I had never met Kim before. But after speaking with both of them, I could really tell that Kim is another, like, black woman mm -hmm. who just wants black people to succeed. She wants people to, um, to realize that, like, black lives matter, essentially. And she's, she's doing a lot at Drexel to make sure that is shown. And so... The conversation went way longer than I expected. My show is usually supposed to only be 30 minutes, and I had an hour and 15 minutes of recording. Oh, no. Exactly, the whole interview. So it went really long, but we had great conversations. Like, both of them had a lot to say about everything, and I think they need to hear from someone in the task force that was a person. So yeah. it's not just like, okay, this is a task force, and, you know, these are the people heading it and stuff. Um but I thought it went really well, and both Kim and Tiana are really, really passionate about the work that they're doing, and I think that they chose a great person to help run this task force, and I just hope that the student body was able to get the same type of feelings that I got, you know, from the interview, and I also wanted to make sure I was asking questions that students wanted answers to, yeah. like, you know, especially for the Drexel Community for Justice, which I love. Um, I know they had called out the anti-racism task force for their response to their yes. email and I want to make sure to address that with Kim to see what was that about because they're one of the student orgs that are really heading this you know movement right. really take action and putting pressure on administration so I want to make sure that they're aware that you know students are not holding back so they better be ready for the fire oh yeah <laughs> that's for sure and it was really awesome that you got to have this conversation especially with Kim considering I mean we've seen Drexel for Justice not everyone is able to have these conversations with the higher-ups and administration but it's really awesome to hear that you felt the conversation um, was a productive one. So how did you get involved with this podcast? I know Good Morning Neighbors is a program that WKDU has run. I think this is its sixth season, sixth season correct me if I'm wrong. Um, 
but how did you get involved with it? So I've been working on Good Morning Neighbors since for like almost two and a half years now. Um, I started with, there was a group of us and we would just interview, you know, local nonprofits about the work they're doing in the community. Mm -hmm. And um, our like, my supervisor now and our head is Lauren Souter. He's amazing. He saw so much potential in me, like, and that I didn't even see. And I think that's what really pushed me to be, to work really hard at what I do. Um, So, I had been working on that show, and then when it was time to go on co-op, you know, for the spring, summer this year, I couldn't get a co-op because, of, you know, COVID was happening, and everything was just going to... Yeah, it's a, it's a common theme. <laughs> right. So, I'm sure everyone can relate. Yeah. So, Lawrence had called me and was just like, hey, like, um, I heard you don't have a co-op, so... If you want to work on GMN for your co-op, that'd be great. And this was, at this point, it was summer. And this was when, you know, really fresh after George Floyd was murdered and everything was happening. And I was like, I would love this opportunity, but if I'm going to do it, it's going to have to be about Black Lives Matter. Of course. Exactly. It's going to, and Lawrence was totally down for it. He was like, I think that's a great idea. Um, So that's kind of how I got started with the show in general and with this season as well. And it's been it's fun. <laughs> yeah. And I'm really glad that you had that idea because I mean, this movement has gained so much momentum on the national stage. And even though we're not seeing all the same headlines that we have been, um, it's really awesome that you yourself are working to continue this, this conversation, especially in our own community at Drexel. So what is the future of the podcast as you see it. I know you've released some more episodes um, since the first one. Maybe if you want to talk about that. But even when your co-op is over, what do you see as the future of GMN or just conversations about race at Drexel in general? Right. Um, And just to what you had just said, that was another big thing for me. I was like, I don't want there to be so much outrage and uproar about what's happening and then conversations die down. You know, we don't see the change that we need to see. So I want to make sure that, you know, that conversation kept going and people kept seeing what was happening. Um, And another important thing to me was the education. I felt like there was so much miseducation around Black lives, around Black history, just around racism and everything that has been happening so I really want to make it a point to educate people and also talk to people who are in the community doing the hard work on the front lines Mm -hmm. and pushing for this fight um but in regards to the future of GMN so so it's a two-part series and we do an educational episode I should say I do an educational episode and an interview with local leaders. So the subjects that I've been focusing on this season are police brutality and mass incarceration. Um, I actually wrote my script for that episode a while ago. And then after Jacob Blake got shot, I went back and re-edited it and I'm going to re-record it and put that out because I have so much more to say now, but um, stuff like that. It's like things are changing every day. Every so day. that's one topic I've been working on. And I spoke to a man named Jeffrey Abramowitz who works in the community in re-entry. He um, was a lawyer and he went to jail actually himself. And then when he came out, he realized how hard it was for people to re-enter society. So he began doing a lot of work and he's done like so much stuff. It's amazing. So um, that was a really good interview as well um i also talk about the black wealth gap Mm. um in america you know there's there's a huge wealth gap when it comes to the white community and the black community so um i'm speaking to another lady she used to work at a financial literacy um nonprofit, but now she works at drexel so it was actually kind of (laughs) yeah i was looking for her to find to find her because i had known of her before and then i realized that she works at drexel now it's like that's that. crazy um and my supervisor put me in contact with a this man his name is julian he's a uh, he's he like works with state representatives and things like that so he's been putting me in contact with some pretty powerful important people so those are a few surprises coming up and we'll, we'll be talking about the power of you know voting the importance of 
the black vote and why it's important for black people to vote and make sure that their voice is heard and things like that. Um, I'm also going to have an episode on black on black violence because it's a myth. I don't think black on black violence is really a thing that's happening. I mean, if you're in a community surrounded by people who look like you and there's crime, who else are you going to be killing? Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's a whole other episode. Yeah, and- it might exist, but it's not an argument. Exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah, it's not a defense. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, white on white violence exists too. <laughs> but yeah, so those are some of the things that are coming up for GMN. My co-op is almost over; it's on the 18th, but um, I still plan to work on it throughout the fall. So just won't be getting paid, but I've worked on it without being paid before, so it's not a problem <laughs> for me. <laughs> you know, so yeah. yeah. Welcome to liberal arts at Drexel. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Well, for those who are interested in following your podcast in the future, where can they go to listen to it? And do you have social media people can follow? Okay. Um, so you can listen to Good Morning Neighbors on WKDU, which is where we air on the radio. That's 91.7 FM, Philadelphia, um, on Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. Tuesday mornings is our like educational episode where I just teach um, about, you know, things that are happening in the community. And then on Thursdays is when I do an interview with a community leader. And then those episodes are only 30 minutes, but most of the time they go a little bit over. So I put the full episode on podcasts and you can listen to that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and SoundCloud, all under Good Morning, Common Neighbors. Um, our social media, our Facebook page is Good Morning, Common Neighbors, and our um, Instagram is at goodmorn.neighbors. And if anybody's interested in being a part of Good Morning Neighbors, when I start in the fall, we're going to open up the team a little bit more to bring in more people. So if you're interested in working on Good Morning Neighbors, you can reach out to me at jea84 at drexel.edu or our Instagram. Um, Yeah, for more information, just hit me up. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jane, again for being on our show now the second time. Hopefully we will see you again soon and good luck with all the work that you're doing. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. If you guys like this video, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe below. And if you're not already following us on Instagram, you can find us on Instagram at inside underscore ambition. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you soon.